All right. <clears throat> Ready? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, don't panic. This won't be complicated and I'll do it real quick. Hi guys. You say hello. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Marion Kerr, uh, the host of What is Reality and Hacking Reality. And I'm David Yakubovich. I, I, I'm the director of Hacking Reality and What is Reality. Yes, and we have gotten a ton of comments and tweets and Facebook comments and emails about the movies. And so we thought we would do a little Q&A video and answer some of your questions directly that we get asked over and over and over again. Now, these are not going to be the sciencey questions because none yes. of us are actual scientists which actually might answer some of the questions you're asking. Um, <laughs> Blockchain Gale from YouTube who writes, is this girl smart? She seems smart. I'm confused. Is she an actress? A filmmaker? A comedian? A math chick? An IT girl? A quantum theorist? Why don't you go through them one by one? Okay. okay. <clears throat> is she an actress? Yes, Blockchain. I am an actress and I feel like that's pretty obvious. Um, it's not obvious. I the amount of people obvious. who thought you were a scientist is really incredible. So when Garrett added together the Lee groups representing each and every force and particle in nature that we know of. There were <laughs> scientists who thought, who were wondering if you were a physicist. Oh, okay. Yeah, there, well, there was, it was, it was incredible. There were tons of people. Uh, Good filmmaker, casting. comedian, um, I'm not sure what a math chick is. I was supposed uh, to a math dude or... Um, it's a specific. chick who likes... Math. Like a little hen? No, that's not yes. quite. Yes. Yes. Okay, cool. Uh, an IT girl? No. A quantum theorist? No. So, blockchain, there is your answer and everyone else's answer about that. Um, what do you got? Okay, how does mainstream academia feel about you guys? <clears throat> so, you guys being the people featured in the film, because we're just the filmmakers. Yes. Um, I don't think mainstream academia cares about us. Mainstream academia does not care about us. No. Um, but as for Garrett and, and Garrett Lisi and, and Clee Irwin, who are separate entities, um, from what I understand, so I'll, the movie refers to a lot of this. Garrett talks about how um, it's hard to get funding for research that is not, um, for, the, for theoretical physics research that's not in, in the mainstream. In other words, it's not a string theory. So string theory definitely applies to paragliding. Not sure much else. Um, and in the movie, Garrett says that this is because um, many people are already doing their dissertations, PhD students are doing their dissertations on stuff that's got to do with string theory, for example. So it's hard to, to move that theory out, even if many people think it's no longer the right theory. I am not making any claims to whether or not I think it's the right theory or not, because I don't know anything about it. But it's a theory. But it's a theory. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Was that, was that, did I say that okay? Or was that like I think it was too okay. long? I don't know. Alex Corrado from YouTube writes, mathematically, how many times did you have to change your outfit for this video? <laughs> and I feel like people gave a lot of guff for the outfit changing. Okay, so there was there was the first outfit in the pool, right? So that was that suit. Oh, we're, we're counting the outfits? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Okay. So there was the suit. There's the suit. There's what I'm wearing outside the pool. You have always been in the pool. Uh, right, right, right. The, the, the black dress, right? Uh -huh. the, uh, the one in the car, the yellow shirt. Yep. Um, um, there's the red dress. The red dress, right? Uh, in the big, there's in like the, big the white office room. outfit when I have a braid. Mm hmm. Uh, the, the leather, the leather jacket yeah. with the suit also. Mm hmm. Um, the, the 50s outfit. Yep. <laughs> he knows this better than I do. Uh, seven, right? I'm, That's I'm gonna cheat probably. for a minute. So, yeah, so it's seven a, plus the one you wear throughout all the Garrett sections and the one you wear through oh, yeah. the, all of the Klee sections. Eight and then nine. Criminy. So, so All right, so there might so be nine outfit changes in the nine second film. Nine outfit changes. That's right. a lot. Um, but here's the thing. We shoot these over several days, and I don't really want to be in the same outfit for several days. Uh, and sometimes we shoot in very hot places, so I'm okay with changing all the outfits. I stand by it. And also, part of the reason for the outfits is that it just makes it it makes it more fun to watch, right? Just like the visual, the constant visual changes. Cool. I mean, we're talking about such hardcore science. Yeah that at least you have something fun to look at Just while, mix while it up. that's happening. You know, <laughs> Why yeah. not? Yeah. Okay, so now you. All right. So where can I buy that watch? That watch. Oh, the steampunk watch. This, so, okay, so this watch, which we're gonna show you a picture of right now. Am I stoned? Okay, so if every moment is co-creating every other moment, both forward and backward in time. So it's called the Tesla watch, T-E-S-L-A, um, and it's, 
and it's on a website called thinkgeek.com. Mm -hmm. And so just go to thinkgeek.com and put in Tesla Watch. We have nothing to do with this website. <laughs> we're not getting any money from it's that. It's just where we bought a cool watch and we're answering Think the question. Geek. We hope you make a lot of money from this. That's so, it. Yeah, whoever you are. Um, we hope you're good people. <laughs> um, Roberta Cypress uh, from YouTube just wrote, you are so white. <laughs> and, and some of the other comments I've gotten is I feel like a lot of people are concerned about me being so pale and out in the desert. That's like, <laughs> yeah. I hope she's wearing sunblock. Where's that parasol? I'm like, I'm, I've had this skin tone my entire life. I got it covered, guys. Like, I'm good. You can, it's okay. It's Did you get burned at any point? Was I think when we did the reshoots, I got a little bit on my back, but not in the, in the first movie. We had a ton of concerns, and I had no burns in the first movie, and only on the reshoots. We were more blasé the second time. Yeah, totally. Bit, yeah, yeah. But like, they only, that's why the parasol's there, is because I'm so pale. It's my parasol. So I'm good. It's okay. Don't worry about yeah, it. Yeah, the parasol is a, is a, a prop due to the necessity. You yes. Know? Um, okay. Um, where can I buy this watch? It's done. Mm -hmm. Isn't the golden ratio 1.618? And not 0 0.618. Well, I have a, an answer to that here from <laughs> the, the, the clear movie. So here's the response. It's the same ratio. A ratio can be one cat and two dogs. We can write that as one to two or as one half or as 0 0.5, right? 1.618 is a number. It's not a ratio. And 0 0.618 is a number, right? It's not a ratio. A ratio is two numbers, correct? <laughs> This is, how, this is how Klee writes. <laughs> but, but we can agree that the expression of any ratio can be done with an infinite set of two number pairs. For example, instead of one to two, we can write two to four and so on. But with ratios, we can agree that the shortest way to write them is to set one of the two numbers to be one. Okay. So we would go with one over two or 0.5 or one colon two. Back to phi, the golden ratio. So what is the ratio? of the number 1.618 to 1. And what is the ratio of the number 0 0.618 to 1? As long as it's the same ratio, you can write it either way. That's like the most comprehensive answer you're going to get here today. Yeah, I'm yeah. not a mathematician. Yeah. I'm just reading about it. I'm just, I'm just reading about it. What's next? Um, this one is random, and I don't know what he's talking about. Howard Johnson from YouTube, probably not your name, Howard, um, <laughs> wasn't there, this is about um, hacking reality, wasn't there an episode of Star Trek about this? Nine exclamation points. Was there? I don't, and I was like, look, I'm pretty loose on like some of that Deep Space Nine stuff, but like, there's no Star Trek episode about the E8 Lattice. Probably not. There is a movie about eight-dimensional stuff that's like a really dreadfully silly E8 movie, uh, um, uh, 80s movie that's called, what was it called? Mm -hmm. The Adventures of Buckaroo Banzai Across the Eighth Dimension. Oh, yeah. That's like a popular movie. It's a terrible movie. It's pretty fun. It's really the end sequence is amazing. Um, yeah, it kind of is. Um, so this is like, this is a question that we got a bunch of times and we got it on two different platforms. Stephen Young from Twitter uh, and Ben Thuhip from Facebook. Uh, both say, waiting to watch the next episode, when is the third film being released? There's a lot of presumptions in there, like we've suddenly committed <laughs> to a television series, which P.S. we haven't, and we haven't. everyone's just like, cool, when's the next one? When's the next step? Upload. It would be fun to do we another waited, one. We waited three weeks, so we can't wait anymore. Yeah, yeah, I was right. like, this you is, had a year in between lot. the first two, you know, you can wait another year. But I like that there's just a presumption that like more is to come, like, but of course, you made two, so. We should make another chop, one. Chop, chop. You think we should? I think we should. Should we ask them what it should be about? Or yeah, is that what should like... the next one be about? You can let us know. Okay, if any of you are really into um, quantum physics and are reading, you know, like the quantum gravity research, uh, actual scientific material, and are, are maybe into Garrett's work and stuff like that, if you're reading about hyperdimensional geometry and things like that, um, if you have an idea for a movie that you think we should make, about this that that we could maybe bring down to layperson level mm -hmm. then uh or then, that you think demands us. to be brought down to the layperson level because like this stuff's just ridiculous so yeah. like help a friend out um i just also like this guy varpen from youtube just writes whatever's wrong with this woman i like it what is wrong with you i don't know i feel like i'm a pretty nice person so but i still think it's really funny varpen so thank you so classy mistake from youtube <laughs> says, uh, could you sum this up for me as if I was a five-year-old? Nope. No, no, <laughs> definitely, not. definitely no. Cannot do that at all. Like, how do you hire, hire dimensions to a five-year-old? Like, where would you... So if your teddy bear grew an extra access, like, I don't know, like, what are we, you know? I 
have interviewed several physicists now, and I have asked them many times <laughs> to bring it down to a five-year-old level. And then so they pause for a few seconds and they just start talking slightly slower with the exact <laughs> same language. And then they just continue and they just go back to normal after after three sentences. Yeah. They, they just can't do it. No, it's, not at it's all. It's incredible. Um, talking the, to you, Garrett. Cubanomics from Instagram has a question for you, David, um, about, the new, about the new movie Hacking Reality. Does it shit all over Einstein again? I love your theories, but I think you can deliver your message without shitting on one of the greatest minds in recent history. Show some respect. Why do you hate Einstein so much? That's my question. Like, why do you... He seemed like a pretty nice guy. So. There was no shitting <laughs> on Einstein. There have been quite a few complaints about the, the, the cartoons from the first video. Space is smooth. There is no evidence of that. I think, I think the reason for that comes from... Um, so Einstein later in his life was having a lot of trouble with, with, uh, with a lot of the tenets that were coming out in quantum physics. Mm -hmm. And, and, uh, and so, so when we have that big argument between Heisenberg and, and Einstein with, mm -hmm. the, with the people protesting, yeah. um, that's, that's, that's just a way to illustrate in a, in a silly way and hopefully memorable one um, that, that Einstein was just having trouble with the ideas of a quantized space-time. Um, Do you think it was that argument that made people think that like I think that's Einstein? the only time where we're making Einstein look like he's wrong about something. Oh, okay. But um, the idea is not to shit about Einstein. This is known uh, uh, science history. Um, the idea was to amplify that in a, in a silly way. Um, so yeah. for the record, we thought it was silly, uh, not that we hate Einstein. Nobody in the movie hates Einstein. And if you disagree, I, I, I completely respect that you, that you disagree. <laughs> And uh, I don't care. And also no cares. Yeah. Um, Next. <laughs> and I just want to do a quick shout out to my favorite comment from the very first film. Uh, this is from Marshall L. Heipler, Hepler, uh, who wrote, Cool story, babe. Now go make me a sandwich. Um, was, I laughed. I had a good laugh about that one. That was, I think, the biggest laugh that I got. Um, Can we read through some of our favorite comments? Sure, if you want. Okay. <laughs> this video just proved God's existence. And they are trying so hard to find another way, but they still don't realize there isn't one. There's a lot of that. I think we were trying to we either were how pro we God or anti God. God's existence. I didn't really know how God fact entered into the whole thing, to be honest. But apparently, it did quite a bit. People thought it was a cult, cause like, look at this. People I'm thought, so, yeah, this is cult, yeah. I'm pretty culty. Yeah, you're, um, you're very Stepford. A little yeah, bit. Yeah. Um, and so they're just like, what kind of cult is this? Um, a lot of, of people asked about cults. Yeah, I think it's me. In fact, I think I think, I think think the the question that came up many times was, is this a cult? Yeah, and if so, which one? Because um, yeah. <laughs> I'd like to join. <laughs> I know. Call 1-800-CULT. Cults. I, got, I do all the cults. I got all the cults for you. Um, this guy wrote, I don't know what the hell I'm watching right now or how the hell I got here. I don't even know what this girl is talking about. Somebody help. And then the reply underneath him is, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy that one. This guy said, this guy must have liked you. He said, everything is super cool around her. That's you guys, though. I feel mm. like that's you guys doing, like, effects and blah, blah, blah. You bunch of burnout drug users. <laughs> I also like the people who were like live, like YouTube commenting as the video went on. Uh -huh. Like they would have a, they would have like a comment that was like, you know, two minutes and then like 16 minutes later and then 18 minutes later. <laughs> yeah, they're, yeah, just they're, like, they're live, they're live just like commenting. They're just like live commenting. I'm like, I didn't know that was a thing, but I guess that's a thing. This guy says, I watched until 419. That's where I stopped watching. <laughs> that's really specific. What happens at 419? I don't really know. The amount of comments that we've had where people mention DMT is really out of control on both videos, both on hacking reality and on what is reality. It's, it's, it's mm -hmm. incredible. Okay. I think there have been a thousand comments by now of people talking about DMT. Hmm. So I've never tried it and <laughs> I, I'm very curious to now though. That's so funny. We can just make a list of all the things these, this movie is not about. Like it's not about God, it's not about DMT, it's not about a cult, it's not about... And someone else said, your video proves there is a God. All right. Your video proves it. it. Proves it. Proves it. Where is the proof? I don't know. Where is the proof? I don't understand. I think I watched a different video. So we should be done? No, we should thank them. We should thank who? For watching and commenting and like being so nice and verbal and only occasionally sexist.
Yeah, I mean, yeah. You know, come on, guys. But mostly, like you guys little, have been It's a little awesome. embarrassing, you know. It's, <laughs> it's only because you're a guy. It's a little embarrassing <laughs> to me as a guy. Yeah, some of the comments are a little much. <clears throat> um, yeah. So this is one of my favorite ones. Someone said, I thought Gillian Anderson was the host. And then Quantum <laughs> Gravity Research actually responded and said, she is. And then that person, who clearly has, like, little understanding of sarcasm said but in description it says host mary and kurt that is confusing that is yeah it's a little confusing yeah so thank you so much everyone for all your comments and posts and tweets and all thing and uh if you guys have more suggestions or an idea for a subject matter that you would like to see in a potential third film hit us up on all of our social medias which should be below here mm -hmm. yes or you can write us on yeah i guess that's that should be the end of it right? i think i actually said the whole thing yeah so, okay yeah. well I'm, i have nothing more to say so <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Good. <laughs> <laughs> That's like no, no, no more drinking you when you're in. John Malkovich getting a pie in the face. No, I, I want, no, no. I'm not John Malkovich. Pie. You're not cutting. <laughs>